Okay, in this video we are going to talk about how to use the TI Inspire Cast calculator page, so let's get a calculator page, to solve a trig equation. So we want to do this in two ways. One, we're going to solve it in general, and then we're going to solve it over a closed domain, so a specific interval. Um, so solve is no different for trig equations. You just go to menu and then option three, and option one is solve. So hopefully you've done this a lot uh, since you got your calculator. So solve, and let's say we want to solve uh, sine of x equals, and we're going to go with the square root of 3 over 2. So this is something you could probably solve in your head, um, but we're going to do it on the calculator. So I put comma x to tell it what to solve for, and then I'm going to hit enter, and you can see it gives me the solutions. So it's writing it as x equals 2 times n1 times pi um, plus pi over 3. So that's really, we would have written that as pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, um, and then 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times pi times n is how we would have written it. Calculator goes with 2n1 times pi. So um, the n1, when you see that sort of thing pop up, that means you're only allowed to substitute in integers for that value. Um, and if you notice, so there's n1 there. If you keep solving, it just keeps adding to the number. So I, if I'm on n4, it means I've used solve four times where it's giving me this kind of integer generalization. Uh, so don't worry about the number behind the n. That n just means integers. Um, so that's if we want to solve in general, but we really want to be able to solve on a specific interval. So what you do then is you set it up exactly the same. So if I hit enter here, it would actually just give me another generalization. It would say n5 this time. Um, but what I want to do is specify an interval. So to do that, you type solve. You have to get outside the parentheses. So a lot of times people accidentally put it in here. It doesn't really work. You get outside the parentheses, go control equals, and then go to such that. And then I'm just going to specify. So I'm going to go negative 2 pi. I'm going to type pi. It's faster for you to use the, um, the pi key. And then I need less than or equal to x, and then less than or equal to, again, uh, 2 pi. So I'm going to solve on uh, two periods, over two periods of this particular function. And there you can see it actually just gives you the solutions. Um, and they're in ascending order, so they go from smallest to largest. And that's pretty useful. Uh, I do want to show you, because a couple of other things can happen when you solve trig equations. Because calculator uh, is, it, it's kind of weird in how it decides to show you the answer. So let's, let's try this. So I'm going to solve, again, sine of 3x minus pi over 4 equals negative square root of 3 over 2. So you can see sometimes it's faster for me to type things rather than to use the keyboard. Um, and I want to solve for x. So I'm just going to solve this in general. So I'm going to press enter. And I get these weird looking things. So a human would not have written this. And what I do when this happens is I just combine solve with expand. So I'm going to go to menu. Option 3 is algebra. And then option 3 again is expand. And if I go up and I usually just uh, highlight this, so I'll hold shift and arrow over it. So shift is over here by control. So hold shift, arrow over it, paste it down. I'm going to press enter. And another weird thing happens. So what the calculator does, for some reason, is it finds uh, kind of the first negative solution and then the first positive solution. It seems to do that almost all the time and generalize based on those. Um, although here it looks like it's found two negative solutions. Uh, all right, well, let's explore that in a second. I don't really like that it does this because I like to start with positive solutions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, you can see it's generalized. It's negative 5 pi over 36 and then plus 2 times pi n over 3. So 2 pi n over 3, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add to the previous answer 2 pi over 3. So it's as if I'm letting n equal 1. When I press enter, now it's giving me 19 pi over 36 plus 2 pi n over 3. Um, and that's an answer that I would rather give. And so I'm going to do the same thing to the second solution. So I'm going to expand, go up here, I'm going to highlight this. So I'm holding shift as I arrow through it. Press enter. It gives me negative pi over 36 plus 2 pi n over 3. Um, so what I'm going to do is, again, just plus... 2 pi over 3, and you have the positive one. So there's no reason to do that. I just prefer to do it. I don't really have a reason for it, actually. 
Um, and then also we could just solve this in general. So I'm going to go back up and get this and paste it down. And I'm going to specify the domain. So I'm going to do such that. So that's control equals. And one to the left takes you there right away. And then I'm going to do negative pi over 2 less than or equal to. So if you're typing on a computer, you can actually just type uh, a less than and then an equal to. And the calculator will interpret that as less than or equal to when you hit enter. And then x and then less than or equal to pi. And if I hit enter, you can see that there are four solutions on that interval. All right. So... Uh, that's basically how everything works. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.